my lovers welcome to my channel my name is made for love and this transmission is for twins twins on the 1111 portal we are going to power up and shine your twin lights now my intention was to <coughs> for us to do an alignment of the chakras because sometimes um the chakras are misaligned and sometimes that's what that's what causes um the triggers but then i decided against that because I don't know where all of you are in your twin journey and some people are more misaligned than others and if for someone is totally misaligned meaning that if you have a partner or counterpart that has abandoned the journey completely they don't want to do they don't have anything to do with it or whatever it is <clears throat> and this that misaligned and then you try to miss you try to align them it can cause a, a soul shock for that person um, they can get incredibly depressed and if you guys aren't talking and they don't have that support or context um, They won't understand what the hell is happening to them um, And they will need um, Psychological assistance and support. So I decided uh -uh, um, that is too risky um, To do so we're just going to power up the twin lights so that will shine our twin lights So we're going to power up the connecting chakra. So what I'm going to do before we start today I'm going to look at the union and the energies as we approach that 1111 portal, right? I'm going to have a look at that um, in a moment. But before we do that, I want to play the first time, first and only time that this was done for me. Um, actually, it was the first time that um, Charlotte looked at a twin flame connection. We had had discussions with her guides before about this, but it's the first time that she was, she was able to do it. She actually saw a twin flame connection um and you're gonna see she's gonna be describing the structure and that's important because when you're following me in a meditation you have to visualize that as we as we power up and then she's also she also got some downloads from her guys during this about what um this kind of thing can do for the connection and of course the advantages and disadvantages especially of the alignment and um what else are you gonna hear anyway we'll discuss it after and then we do, we're gonna discuss prep for the 11 11 portal because there are things that i want you guys to do and then we're going to look at the energies of um each counterpart as we approach that portal okay so let me play that now for you now she's doing this in trance so she might be talking slowly it might be softly um and there's someone a facilitator prompting her you'll also hear her mention something about john john is her guide for srt her main guy okay so let's have a listen there so they're kind of almost lined but they're chakras if you imagine there's like beams of light they just don't quite mean do you know what i mean john so we just balance it again That's really cool. So when he's like aligned them, they're almost like you can see them like powered up. It's really cool. Like in a circle, it's like a ring of light. I can see the two lights. It's one at the top, one at the bottom, and when they're aligned. It kind of shot all the way around this ring as well, and those two lights just came on. So I think that's what it... I think when you align their chakras properly, that's where the disconnect is. When you align them, the lights activate fully. Does that make sense? Yes. There's like um, there's two lights in the heart chakra as well. There's a pink one as well as a green one, and John's saying that's for healing because that's what the twin flames do. They heal, and it's um, there's like divine light in there. 
the ones at the top are, are higher chakras. So if the root is the earth chakra, the, light, this, the, the one at the bottom of the circle, and the top of the circle is like, like the universal soul. And there's one for each of them. John's saying we all have a, a twin. He said, I can do this for anybody. That's really cool. There's, um, okay, so he's saying as well. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sense of what show me. So yeah, the top the top and bottom like that's that's the mirrors. And that's how we're connected in terms of so they can the, the ring that goes around the outside connects in the crown. Kind of almost passes like at this angle through the top of the head, and then the the crown connects upwards to the divine. That like one, and um, and that's that's how they that's how they're always connected. And that's why you can feel, feel, feel them, feel that energy. It comes through the heart, well, through all of your chakras, that there's that pink beam from the heart. And he, he's shown me as well, like the misalignment is what causes the triggers. So same now they've been aligned, it might really trigger a lot, like a final purge. But now that healing being is aligned, it will accelerate that process. That's really interesting. No, it's not. There isn't one. It's just this ring. Okay, hold on. Okay, so we can put that back. So th this would have... Um, this will bring them much closer. It's not just like a, a shield of protection, it's, it's about unity as well. Yeah, that, that's, that's done now, that's good. Are there any connection blockages? So no, that's... So now it's alignment? Yeah, he was saying it's about alignment. And he's saying that as... Um, he says most twins um, the misalignments are caused by the, the it, it's not a blockage it's a misalignment and that when they connect and align that that's that's when they really start to make progress but he's, he's shown he's shown me that most people can be they weren't like these guys weren't that misaligned at the same time, sometimes you can find twins that are actually outside of that ring or at angles, do you know what I mean? So the, the chakras don't connect at all. So he said you should see really positive effects of the, the alignment and the, the shield and unity. Well, interesting. Is there any part of the 
Pentecostal. He's saying that the the ability to feel, heal, and connect with twin will be dramatically increased because of the alignment. But these guys weren't that misaligned. It was almost like um, if you could imagine them standing facing one another. They were just slightly, do you know what I mean? Like one of them's a few inches higher, so the chakras weren't quite meeting. That's so cool. Okay guys, so that was um, my twin alignment. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're not going to be doing the alignment part. And, that, and that's because I don't know individually where you guys are and it can cause a lot of harm if it's done if you guys are grossly misaligned as I said um, it could cause a soul shock so we're not going to do that we're just going to power up um, the connecting chakra and shine those lights so make the, the lights expand from the from those different chakras and shine our lights on the world that's what we're going to do now in preparation for this um, and it's so wonderful that we can start 11 days before I want you to really focus on your self-care um, if you can stay away from um, recreational drugs um, alcohol meat that kind of thing so you're, you're vibing high try to get exercise every day because the goal is to increase your vibration okay so that when you're coming to that 11 11 meditation that we are going to do you are vibing at your highest right because there are going to be a lot of negative things released Around that time, there are going to be a lot of forces um, working against um, connections for it to be disrupted. So you want to be vibing highest leading up to this portal, okay? So everybody's welcome to um, that particular session. It's just that we're going to be really focusing on twins and lighting up that connecting chakra. And then I read for everybody after. It's not a super chat. Everybody has a fair chance for a reading. I'm reading for everyone right but it's just that at that in on that particular day whilst my meditations are usually for everyone it's going to be focused on twins because it's the 11 11 portal okay okay guys so now let's have a look at um energies as we approach the 11 11 portal i have df on this side i have dm on this side um let me just play my usual aura cleansing music and that's another thing you can do there's music to cleanse your aura music to um uh, uh, get your chakras in uh, in alignment um use it used for healing i mean you really need to ramp up and get yourself vibing at your highest i'm approaching um these energies okay all right so let's have a look at the energies um approaching the 11 11 portal so i'm going to look at the f first where is her headspace regarding her counterpart and her connection moving into these in this into this 11 11 portal what's she thinking where's her head at we'll get three cards where is her head at first card we got we got knight of pentacles so we have Virgo energy here. We have Seven of Swords. Uh, Gemini Libra Aquarius energy here. And we have <laughs> the Knight of Wands. Sagittarian energy. And this card, um, this is a player card, right? All right, so what is she thinking about? Um, she's still given to this connection, right? She's still given to this connection. She wants to make a solid offer, but she's looking back and what is she looking back on she's looking back on the past she's looking back on the deception that occurred there and she's looking back on how potentially this particular dm that we're um tapping into how he was inconsistent he might have been a player he might have had several options and she's wondering if it's going to be more of the same or has her dm and i'm going to channel he and she but we know it is the feminine and the masculine energy okay she wants to know um, if it's going to be more sneakiness or has he 
um, you know, moved out of that energy. This is her concern. Um, is it going to be more consistent this time or is it going to be more um, of the same? Hey now, let's see where his head is at. I'm doing this because I'm really, I really want to know how aligned are they um, in their mental and emotional space. How aligned are they in their mental and emotional space? So, headspace regarding his DF and this connection. Now, the energies could be flipped because um, DF could be in, her, in a masculine energy and he could be in feminine energy. Okay, so take it as it resonates. You're going to know which energy is yours. We have Libra, the Queen of Swords, reversed. We have Six of Wands, Leo Sagittarius, Aries energy. And we have Judgment, Scorpionic energy. All right, so what are we getting here? All right, so several messages I'm getting here. Um, this DM that we're tapping into, he's had an awakening. And what he's looking back on because he's also looking back he's looking back on his life he's looking at his soul's journey and he's seeing the patterns especially this function um, that he operated in and he's answering the call of spirit to be better he's seeing that he was operating in ego all this time his ego right and that may have made him um, harsh it may have made him be um, deceitful manipulative lying really ruthless so he's looking back on that but what uh, what i am also picking up is that uh, this is how he's seeing you df um and he's really hesitant he wants to come forward for this victory we see that with this six of wands right because he's awake now he's awake now he's faced his own judgment and he's faced divine judgment so he's awake well awake karma can do that but he's wondering if you are in this queen of swords energy if you're going to cut him out if you're going to speak harsh words um if you're going to cuss him out and tell him about your mother you know so he's concerned about this. Um, which queen is he going to meet um, if he comes forward? He may also be thinking about how he may have ruthlessly cut you out in the past or ghosted you. So he's thinking about that as well. Heart space for the DF. When she thinks about her DM and this connection, what is her heart saying? We have the High Priestess. Scorpio, Virgo and oh, Scorpio. Pisces energy primarily, but um, also the opposite polarity, Taurus and Virgo. Um, we have Six of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy. Again, I'm getting several messages here. And we have the Page of Wands. Okay. So in the DF, we see a desire for communication, maybe an apology, whatever it is, but some so, some small sort of communication. But there's a deep knowing within her that, you know, I mean, this is her counterpart. This is her soulmate, um, her twin. She's thinking about probably having children, um, but she's also thinking about the past. What have, and Yeah, she knows the past life connection, right? She's also thinking about the past, the things that happened there. She's thinking about the good times, though. She's thinking about the good times, right? And there's a deep knowing within her that, you know, um, her DM is going to come forward to offer some kind of communication and some kind of words of love. She knows this um, intuitively. She knows this. But there's also something that she isn't seeing clearly either, even though she's using her intuition. She's thinking about the past and she might be painting it in a... in... not an, in a not-so-balanced way. Maybe she's focusing on all the negative and not seeing him in a holistic um, point of view. 
maybe there's a lot of illusions um you know that she has she's seen the past with it, it through an through a negative lens through a negative lens and maybe painting him or demonizing him more than she should but she's she's thinking about good, the good times too she knows this is her counterpart and she knows that he's going to come forward with some sort of message in his heart space we have the knight of pentacles so virgo energy here and her, and she had the knight of pentacles in here <laughs> wow amazing and then we have the king of swords reversed <laughs> he's scared he is so scared right but he knows this is his counterpart king of swords queen of swords in his energy just in the reverse let's get one more card One more card, please. Uh, now we see an emperor energy. Okay, beautiful beautiful but this could be how he sees you and eh? this could be um he sees you taking charge of your life and you've laid down the law and order right so we have um taurus libra energy here we have aquarius energy all right what is he thinking about he's thinking about you and i'm i'm getting that you are masculine energy you are manifesting your abundance you've laid down the law law and order has been laid down by you you set down your boundaries this is what it is okay you have dictated who will come into your space and who will not and the kind of behavior that will be tolerated and what will not right so this is how he's seen you in your full power in your full autonomy and he's also seeing you as ruthless ruthless maybe even cold so he's thinking about that what kind of reception is he going to receive if he does come forward with his offer because he does he wants to come forward with his offer here we see him pentacle in hand and it's a solid offer you know knight of pentacles they're slow as slow as they come but they're steady and they're solid right so he wants to come with this offer but the reception not too sure of the reception and he's not too sure if he has the words to say and what he really feels because now king of swords upright this is a diplomat they have the words they can express themselves i mean communication is their thing i'm getting that this person mm -mm, not so much not so much especially when it comes to you but they do want to come forward and take charge they too might have laid down the law in their life and that's why they want to come forward here with this solid offer. Alrighty. So let's have a look at what shadows are each of you facing right now. Let me just put these aside. I'll use them in a moment. What shadows are you guys working? What the hell is this? Sorry, guys. <laughs> the deck was with, oh, stagnant, stagnant. That's the card I was flipped over. I got that card this week, actually. I pulled cards for myself just to help for my heat with my healing, and I pulled that today. Alrighty. So, what shadows is DF facing? We have walking away. We have projecting. And we have warning. But I usually call this card cautious. Alright, what am I getting here? Alright, so DF might be thinking of walking away. Um, could be walking away from her high school, but it also could be escapism as well. You know, not wanting to deal with the emotions and the indecision and all of that. So she's thinking about walking away, but this is kind of like a runaway card. She's thinking of turning her back on this whole bloody thing. But that's because, you know, there's just so much intense emotions and so much thoughts that, you know what, she's just, you know what, let me just, maybe just, I, should, I just need to walk away right now. Um, but she also has to be careful that she's not projecting. That she's not projecting all the things that went wrong in the connection onto her DM. There is a, 
a need for her her own accountability as well because it always takes two so she has to look on this part on the past here and own her own shit also because as i said it takes two it takes two to create a mess and it takes two to create paradise so she has to also have accountability for her own, her own actions but she's cautious she's wary you know she's wondering is it going to have the same pitfalls as before is it going to be a, uh, a road that leads to nowhere a road that leads to darkness so you know she's really um should i or shouldn't i so this is about doubt right this is about doubt and this is about fear it's about fear also so this is what she is facing um this week what shadows is he facing we have judgmental we have vengeful this comes up for him a lot actually And we have distance so what am i getting here um the dm he's looking at how he was so judgmental in the past especially when it came to df um maybe she was not his usual type maybe they didn't have the same philosophies about life spirituality religion he was not seeing her clearly i always get pride and prejudice vibes when i see this word judgmental and especially when it comes to the twin journey oh i meant to tell you guys you guys need to watch that i mean I know a lot of us read the book, but I love Pride and Prejudice, especially the one with Colin Firth. And it's, uh, to me, it's, it's a twin flame story. It's a twin flame story, you know? Yeah. So he's thinking about how judgmental he was and he couldn't see the core essence about, um, of the DF because he was blinded by ego. So this is what he's facing. And he's also facing his own judgment um, at this point in time. Um, he's facing that the fact that you know he might have been very vengeful in the past um held grudges needed to punish those even the df needed to punish those that he um thought might have done him wrong you know he, there's this need inside of him for vengeance to get even so he is facing that as well and then he's facing how distant or how cold he might have been how emotionally unavailable he might have been um in this connection he's recognizing that he might have been um, distant, cold, unavailable in most of his relationships and whilst he may not have seen the role that this played in sabotaging his relationship before I think this is something that's coming in to his awareness now what lessons are they learning? what lessons are they learning currently? Take two. Monk or none for DF. One more for DF. And we keep getting this for her. She's focused on her spiritual journey. She's focused on her spiritual journey. Um, um, maybe has a connection to biblical times. Uh, maybe as a connection to spirituality uh, i mean a connection to maybe christianity or something that happened in biblical times but um she's focused on her spiritual journey so we have two kinds of spirit of spiritual and religious journeys right or it could be that she's trying to integrate the both um her religion and spirituality but it's about her devotion to spirit this is what she is focusing on right now it's about her personal journey with spirit, her devotion to spirit, any hang-ups that she may have about spirituality or religion. This is what she um, is dealing with right now. Okay? This is what she's focused on. This is her journey right now. Her journey with spirit. Any hang-ups or blockages that she may have um, concerning her religious or spiritual path. DM, on the other hand, is learning 
Let's see if the same card that usually comes out comes out for him. Knight or um, Comic Partner. So, oh, what's this? Okay, so we have wars and battles. So we're tapping into a warrior here. And we have Native American. Okay, so this could be dealing with... Um, well, we have the confederate flag here right so this is um the american civil war or it could also be that whole manifest destiny period or whatever it is but i'm getting two things here um he may be realizing that he is a spiritual warrior so again both of them focusing on a spiritual journey might be a spiritual warrior maybe um some of his gifts are unfolding and he's now learning how he's to lose use these gifts to fight the dark i'm also getting that he's learning that the DF is not the enemy. <laughs> the DF is not the enemy. Maybe there's um, peace and uneasiness where he's at. And he's recognizing that his greatest ally is the DF. He's picking his battles. Now this car, this war and battles car, this war, wars and battles card, um, often refers to people who in a past life experience war or were involved in war and battle. And that creates two things. One. A person who is overly defensive and always on um, the off the offense and always think that everybody is trying to sabotage them or everybody's their enemy so they're always ready to strike out that's one part and then we have the people pleasers right they want to create harmony at co all costs even if it's at the cost of their life right so I think this is this is what he's doing he's trying to find that compromise between these two things knowing when you have to go to war and when you have to make peace that's what i'm getting here so war and peace that's what he's that's what he's um focusing on war and peace and his spiritual gifts okay um what does df's 3d self want to say to dm right now what does df's 3d self want to say to dm Get three cards here. What does she want to say? All right, let's see. I'm manifesting a new beginning for her. So whatever she's doing, she has a, she's doing it with um, union or reconciliation in mind. I'm drowning myself in work to bury the memories of you. So she's also trying to cope by focusing on her abundance that's why she's in that emperor energy i want to rush in and tell you the truth about everything so she also has truths to speak or things that she wants to get off of her chest and what about him oh gosh being away from you feels like someone died so he is definitely feeling um the gap that she left in his life he's feeling very empty all these boxes are empty I'm having a massive tower moment. Everything's falling apart all around me. So big changes happen in his life um, and his in his relationships. And then he says, I want to gift you with my truth. So both parties I want to speak the truth about something, want to get something off of their chest. All right, let's get some messages from the higher self now. What do the higher selves want to tell each other here? What message does each counterpart, each counterpart's higher self have for the other? Three cards. So DF wants to let DM know that she is going through the dark night of the soul. okay let me get all the okay okay so it looks like um def has gone through some kind of mini dark night of the soul so she wants to say my love i've gone through the dark night of the soul and i've faced my own narcissistic behavior i've faced my own shadows and i've seen the light and i have been reborn 
out of the darkness I have been reborn and I'm closing off um, old cycles and beginning new ones Wow, it's the M1 to tell the F. <laughs> They're both closing out cycles. He says, my love, I am on my way. I am on my way. Never fear, I'm on my way. I'm, re I'm removing blockages in my path and I am on my way. I'm closing out old cycles and beginning new ones because I want to create a whole new world with you. Hope springs eternal in my heart. Okay, so let's get spirit's advice for this couple and the union. All right, we have the lovers and the sacred marriage. Let's see what spirit's advice. Alright, so one card for DF, one card for DM, and then one connecting card. DF. Okay. All that glitters in the reverse. DM. Serendipity, upright, and the connecting card. come to the edge reverse so it's like a reluctance for both of them to take the sleep of faith okay let's see what's going on um let me get all that glitters um the protection message because when the cards are reversed it's a protection message so let's see what it's about so number 16 okay what's the protection message here this is a signal to walk away from what you're contemplating there's a thin veneer of glitter and sparkle that masks something rotten underneath. Pursuing it will only bring about a difficult situation, and you will be sorry that you got yourself into and you will be sorry you got yourself into it. Stay away. Isn't it wonderful how spirit protects you? Better things are wait. So whatever you're thinking about right now, spirit is telling you um, that you need to walk away from it. Alright, let me see. I've got to clarify. Is Spirit saying that the DM is not ready? And he should walk away for now? Okay. No. Um, it's about work. So this is a message related to work. Let me get another card. It's a message related to work and drowning yourself in work. I'm being the Queen of Swords. Okay. I'm getting the message now. Hold on. It's a message about running away. Yeah, okay, I got it. Okay. So remember we saw that the DF, one of the um, things that she was thinking about was abandoning this journey completely and drowning herself in work and cutting um, the DM off, right? So Spirit is saying, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. As tempting as it is to drown yourself in work and as tempting as it is to be the Queen of Swords, um, don't do it right it's not going to be a happiness it's not going to turn out well for the DM okay so that's a card spirit said don't run away don't run away but you still use your discernment okay all right serendipity spirit has a plan and that plan is to place you in front of the right person at the right time you have met or about to meet someone vitally important to your journey. Someone spirit wants to bring into your life. Only divine forces can plan this meeting. It is out of your hands. Pay attention to the signs spirit presents. And then we have 36, another protection message. So let's see what um, spirit's message. Ah, for both of them. Fear is leading the way into places you don't need to go. Oh boy. Most of what you fear at the moment is an illusion. 
stemming from an old belief that isn't true. Now is a time for courage. You will not be lost at sea. You will not watch everyone else get what you, what you want while you are left alone and unloved. No. The drama of it all. I want to say. False evidence is appearing real, hovering around you. And that's what we talked about with the illusions, with the DF especially. False evidence. The more you dwell on fear, the more real it will become. Ask yourself, who in me is afraid? Love that part of you. Ask, is this true and real right now? The answer most likely is no. Give yourself a hug. It's okay to be scared. Courage must be summoned. In spite of your fear, even when you're not feeling confident, spirit will always catch you. So that's the advice for the counterparts and for the union energies. Don't give in to fear. DF, you're thinking about running away. You're thinking about turning your back. Don't do it. You're thinking about drowning yourself in your work. Don't do it. You're thinking about being a queen of swords. Don't do it. DM, pay attention to the signs. Spirit is leading you in a particular direction and you will know divine timing through these signs. And both of you, don't operate in fear. Come to the edge and take that leap of faith. Spirit has got you. Choose love over fear. I really think that is the, that's the quote for November. Choose love over fear. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy this reading. And I thank you all for logging into my channel. Take care. Bye.